On this episode, I take a, a one-way ticket to Nostalgiaville, and um, boy, I do not like what I see on Caravan of Courage. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to As I with Nick, John, and our expert Kyle. This is the Ewok Adventure, A Caravan of Courage, 1984 made-for-TV story, aided along by George Lucas, written in, in large part by his kids' his nanny. A lot of really fun kind of anecdotes on this and, and kind of fun trivia and things like that. So this was shot in Marin County, which is just a few miles away from Skywalker Ranch. Shot on an extreme budget, but really pushed ahead the quality as far as TV productions of the time. So in this movie, we're getting Warwick Davis, which would go on to play Willow. He played Wicket the Ewok in Return of the Jedi. In these two movies, he is reprising his role as Wicket. Eric Walker, who played the older brother in this, and Wicket, again, Warwick Davis, they together were given two cameras by the crew and said, hey, go ahead in between takes and shoot a documentary of this. And Eric Walker actually posted this years later on his YouTube account, and you can go and see this. And it was pretty amazing to see a 14-year-old Warwick Davis a few years away from from Willow, and then also seeing everything going on behind the scenes of this. And it's a, it's a really cool thing because you can see a lot of qualities in this. And like Kyle had talked about in certain other, other episodes, we we're talking about the stepping stones on how a lot of this appears in Willow as well. So it's a lot of really fun stuff to see. By the way, guys, we're just doing a short, brief discussion on it. We have a full hour long <laughs> podcast on our podcast. That's just ripping it, praising it, and just laughing at it. So <laughs> go to our podcast if you want to listen to more of this afterwards. It's going to be so much fun. Our podcast is on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. And you can also go to azart.space for direct links. I wasn't a big fan of this. Kyle's the middleman, and John loved this. He, like, he was <laughs> just hearts in his eyes and everything. So we have three different opinions here, but we're not going to go too much in our opinions why we didn't like it and stuff. That's all mm. in the podcast. If you want to hear my <laughs> my rants, please go to the podcast <laughs> to hear my rants. But right now we're going to talk about some force magic because I had some yeah. questions about it. But John seemed like he had the answers and Kyle was eating the Kool-Aid <laughs> or dr drinking the Kool-Aid of the answers. Both so eating and drinking the Kool-Aid. All right. <laughs> so, Kyle, can you give us a base of the magic? Yeah, sure. So so the magic really doesn't have any pillars, I would say. But mm -hmm. it is magic because, you know. Stuff happens that can't really be explained, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, it is it is more of like a shamanic, tribal yes. sort of magic, right? Um, yeah. Something that's more based in fantasy than it would be the sort of sci-fi sort of mm. magic of the Force, right? So, yeah. Very true. Like, there's uh, abilities to possess characters and mm -hmm. for objects that turn into lizards and mice. Uh, rocks and within rocks that give directions rocks within rocks. <laughs> yes. And then like that rocks can glide upon the sand yes. and spoilers just in case spoilers, 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 we might spoil something. So for me, the, the magic worked in this world, because if you imagine this is the whole galaxy, this is star Wars. And a lot of times we're focused on the force because you had the Skywalker saga and all those things, but it, it makes sense. And you got a little bit of an introduction to this and rogue one that there's other religions in the world and maybe they're all tied to the force or maybe they're completely different things, but it made sense to me that there's different religions out there. There's, there's, maybe not just force, but there's magic and things like that as well. And for me, I think it really bothered Nick that it wasn't explained, but the whole thing about magic yeah. is you don't know why it works. It's just there. And yeah. for me, sometimes the charm is not knowing how, like, I don't want to know how the magic tricks are done by magicians. I just want to see them and be amazed by it. And I don't know if that's like, Kyle, did you feel the same on this or? No. Yeah. Like, um, I felt similarly. So like, th like when they, when they, uh, like with <laughs> the part with the lizard and the mouse, <laughs> Right. Uh -huh. Like, I mean, like they didn't explain what this meant, like the significance of it, which was fine, actually. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of got it inferred through the reactions of the characters. Right. Um, and and sometimes that's a part of the, mysti uh, the, the mystique of, of magic is that you don't know. Right. There's something yeah. there. I don't want to have I don't want to be like explained to about how it works right off the bat. I kind of mm -hmm. want it to be like. Wait a minute, what's going on there? Yeah, it, I guess this goes along that sometimes you want hand-holding so you understand something, but if you get spoon-fed stuff too much, I mean, it's, it's a hard line to ride, for sure. Yeah. I mean, not not hand-holding, I wouldn't say I want a hand-holding. I just want an explanation <laughs> on something with the magic. <laughs> We have a narrator in this movie. Just in case you guys don't know, there's a narrator in this movie. And you can't even narrate, like, basic plot points for me to just go along with these Ewoks who aren't even speaking English. So I just want to know what's going on. <laughs> Nick wanted a hand-holding experience is what he's saying, basically. He did. 
He just wanted Burl right, Ives so, going like, so what's happening here is blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I just wanted a little bit more, a little bit more so it can de- it can build the world better for me. Now let's talk about some funny story plots. I mean, obviously the acting was bad, and we talked about it in our podcast. Mm. We ripped into the actors, even though we shouldn't have because they were children. And then it was their first time <laughs> acting, but the acting was bad, and there's no denying that. It's just right there. It's yeah. blatant in front yeah. of you. But bad acting leads to great rememberable funny <laughs> scenes <laughs> and I, I mean there's a scene where they're looking for one member to join them and a tree falls and almost smashes his sister and wicket and then like <laughs> the, this guy comes over because he clearly chopped down the tree and he's like you're a tough guy he comes on over and it takes a minute for the kid to get angry like there's like a minute of like pause and then he goes what did you do that for and it's just like like do they edit this right this scene do they not <laughs> cut it in time i was just like this is so funny which led to an axe throwing contest which i did not expect to see in any and that Star completely Wars. resolved all the conflict wow i've never seen anything like that before i like you now please come with us i just like what, that, what? <laughs> but yeah you know what that was something that got me about the acting a lot there was times where they should have been more concerned with the human characters and they just looked mildly amused. And then other times it was way offset. It's like, I wonder if that was an editing thing or they didn't get the note. Like, Hey, you need to be really upset here. Or, yeah. That was something that definitely got me quite a bit. Yeah. Like the, it was like, a, it was like a stop and go. Like at first Mace, <laughs> the, the boy is, is, is kind of an asshole at the beginning. Right. And then, and then like yeah. through these stops and starts, he, he like becomes more like a, attached and like a part of the group. Right. Like to the yeah, Ewoks, yeah. right? And the hardest yeah. thing for me is he's 100% a poor man's Luke Skywalker. He kind of has the same haircut. He kind of has the same whininess, but he, he's not a Luke Skywalker. <laughs> it's just not not the case. You know, it's kind of rough. And what's with the daughter not looking like the father or the mom or the brother? Like she's just like this little blonde haired, like, you know, angelic looking girl. And none of the rest of the family looks like that. I'm like... Were you adopted? Yeah. Like, okay. It's, Though I will which say the one, have been. the one thing that those children are like with is, is their acting skills. Cause it's like, man, how care, how are they so bad? And then you, then you see their parents. You're like, Oh, okay. That, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. There's also a moment too, where he sticks his hand in a tree trunk and like, <laughs> you know, some alien bites or whatever Then afterwards. But then the next like scene where they're back at their house, the damage hands the other hand. And I was like, <laughs> no, it's so funny. Now, now, wait a minute, Nick. That could be the the nature of that beast, whatever bit him, right? It might be mm-hmm. something. That's true. That's true. We don't know what's going <laughs> yeah, on because it's not explained. <laughs> yeah, the big thing that me is like, hey, kid, do not leave the group. You, you end up underwater thing, you know, like chewing on your hand. It's like, just stick with the group, kid. You know? like, Come on. And you can totally tell this movie was edited for TV. Because, like, some mm-hmm. of the cuts yes. are the best. So they run into a tree trunk to hide from this dog creature that's about to attack them. And then, like, it cuts. And then, like, like it's the next scene is, like, the Ewoks just, like, Daytime. saving yeah. the day in the morning. But you can tell, it's like, the fade was meant for, like, a TV commercial. Like, <laughs> Which is hilarious <laughs> because Nick said that to me, that specific cut. And I said, oh, yeah, I remember that commercial break because I watched this on VHS. Oh, man. Growing up. Like, I remember that cut. Do you remember yeah. what they were advertising? Like, Colgate toothpaste no, or some I, shit? I still have the VHS tape somewhere in storage. I should pull Amazing. that out. And like <laughs> on the documentary that the, the, the Eric Walker that played the older brother, he has the original commercials and advertisements at the end of his documentary. And they are hilarious. Nice. So they is are he, so is funny. he still getting paid for those? <laughs> <laughs> he should be. But, but this cool thing is he is responsible for this being on Disney plus. Like they were going to put this on Disney plus And then he started a petition and kind of a movement. And then, Disney listened in the next month they they added it on there. So it's kind of cool that that actually became a thing because the fans kind of said like, Hey, this is not the best Star Wars yeah. material, but it's a part of our childhood and Idea. whether you consider it canon or not, it's part of our Star Wars. You mean Idea. there's a demand for content and uh, yeah. we don't have to, Waste any money in production? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have an idea. Yes. Let's demand the original Star Wars cut. <laughs> Everybody wants that. I like Han it. shot first. That. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most iconic scenes, we've talked about it here before, the water scene where he touches mm-hmm. the water and magically gets transported to a glass box. It's just, it's amazing. <laughs> It's it's really weird, and I remember that terrified me when I'm a kid as a, as a kid. It's like you can't get out. And mm-hmm. we actually had something similar in the mo- in the show, The Nevers, uh, which was kind of interesting. Oh. We're not going to get into that now, but but there's some interesting stuff about that, like why that scared me as a kid. But yeah, th- it's that's not why you don't go in the water. 
<laughs> <laughs> Don't go in the water. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know what? It, it Maybe I like that it's not explained, but it's reminding the Fellowship of the Rings to stay away from the water. Yeah. You know, don't get near the water. There's stuff in the water. Do not disturb <laughs> there, the water. There could be a magical <laughs> enchantment on the water. Yeah. No, that's right. No, the one thing I liked about that scene, well, thought it was funny, was uh, when when he when he <laughs> blinks out of existence into the water, you can still see his reflection. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, whoa! Oh, that funny. was like almost kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> And I feel like all these moments were just added so the whole thing wouldn't just be walking in the forest. They're like, let's have the horse run off, and then we'll just send a random Ewok to go get the horse back. Like, it's not, it's not even the, yeah. the brother that goes and saves the his sister. No, though I do like in the water scene that um, uh, Wicket's magical item that was granted to him by the shaman person um, actually came into use here. Mm. I was like, what, what the hell is that walking stick going to do? Oh, talking about special items... The girl had the candle. What was your candle to kill fireflies? What was the thing point of that candle that it never burned you out? You know what, John? She never the used the narrator it for never important. explained it. <laughs> I'm going to say that to like all the different things. <laughs> maybe, maybe know, it's so the candle that never burned out because it's fueled by the souls of pixies. I like. I know. Uh, I was like, well, okay. So he's like, at the end, he's like, go off to your family. I'm like, they're all in the candle. They're jacket. all. They're all <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah, they're all dead. Yeah. yeah. That was that was kind of weird. No, but, there was uh, a there was a lot of semi weird stuff. Yes, yeah. and some and, you know, some this, extremely this, weird. <laughs> and this was intended to be a half an hour special at first. Yeah. The t- treatment they did, and then ABC wanted an hour yeah. plus special, and so they had to adjust it. I'm yeah. assuming some of this is just filler content to get that runtime up. If if this was a half an hour, do you think this would have been a much better show? Probably, because Nick, your your yeah. biggest complaint probably, was the pacing, it, right? It probably would have been because they probably would have set off right away to the uh, on the adventure to find their parents. It literally would have yeah, been so Little that, House on the Prairie, uh, Little House on the Prairie, but Star Wars. And that's then, actually an interesting concept. If, if it was edited it's down true. to a half an hour, like they originally wanted, what would this be like? Yeah, that's very, very true. And then hmm. one of the things, well, actually, the one thing we all agree on, the map paintings, yes, were incredible. Yes, and beautiful. Yeah, John is going to do an awesome breakdown on all the map painting, but John's going to give us a little bit right here. But he's doing an in-depth review <laughs> on the VFX and the history. And everything about this movie. But John, tell us about the new form of matte paintings. Tell us, John. Yeah, so I, I have, a, I mean, a lot of this information you can get on, on Wikipedia now. But I have some images that go along this out of print put called ILM, the Art of Special Effects. And they show some before and after, explain the process a little bit more in depth. But they were talking about how, you know, ILM had never done TV content before. And they knew that when you take stuff that's shot on film, which is what's shot on film, and you transfer it for TV, a lot of times the imperfections show up very prevalent on TV. And so they said, okay, we need to approach certain things in different ways in order to make sure that we establish ourselves as being able to do good, solid TV content. So usually with matte paintings, so back matte painting is a background painting. They paint it on glass, which I love that old. And Michael Pingrazio, I think I'm saying his last name right, is this famous, famous matte painter. Some of my buddies that, that are in the industry, I've worked with him in the city still to this day, amazing. But he did a lot of matte paintings for this. And uh, they paint them on glass and they chip away certain areas where they want the live action to be. And they project the footage from either the back or the front. Well, it's a good method, but they want to get the absolute best quality they could. And so what they ended up doing is they filmed certain spots as reference and then they matted off that part of the camera so the where the matte paint is going to go the film negative is not exposed at all and then they go off and based on some funk that they do they paint that matte painting to fill in that part and then they expose the other part with with the live action and so it's a first generation in quality because if you guys remember vhs or have the idea when you make a copy of a copy of a copy the quality gets progressively worse every time you do that and so which we learned from here rick is, and morty from one of the new episodes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's actually a perfect example. <laughs> but, um, but this way they were getting first generation quality of the footage and the matte painting. And uh, this was all because of this movie and its sequel, which I thought was very interesting. All right, you guys. So we have a really fun long form piece of content on our audio podcast. So head over to azart.space or check out Spotify and Apple Podcasts in order to get that where we go in much more depth than we do here. Like Nick said, I'll be doing a specific special effects breakdown on a lot of this stuff because it is a significant part of Disney history. You can see this on Disney Plus if you have a subscription to that, free content and the sequel we're going to be covering on this uh, channel eventually as well. Check out Azart.sys, the audio and video links, and we'll see you on the next Azart. <laughs>